already bismillahir rahmanir rahim we have a question and we are practicing income statement how to prepare an income statement now reading the question for you big is a sole trader the following balance were extracted from a books on 28 february 2017 now the year ends on 28 february for big and if it's ending on 28 february 2017 that it must have been started on 1st march 2016 Okay, after February comes March, and then first March of the seventeen, the new year will start, and this the current year must have been started on last year, that is first March two thousand sixteen. Now there are many uh, items given uh, as list of balances. We have revenue, also known as sales. We have purchase, return inward, also known as sales return, and return outward, also known as purchase return. Administration is expense, obviously. Insurance is also expense. a uh, rent receivable a rent receivable or rent received means the same thing it's an other income for the business electricity is again an expense staff salary is an expense and so is advertising and janat uh then we have non current assets we can underline this non current assets this is non current assets up uh, uh we have three uh, non current assets one is lease old building one is shop fixtures and then we have computer equipment then we have provision for depreciation provision for depreciation is the total depreciation till date so we have total depreciation of these all three types of assets provision for depreciation also known as accumulated depreciation then we have a new thing new adjustment at which is disposal account now what is disposal account we have already uh, learned before uh, while studying non correct assets depreciation so disposal account balance can be a gain or it can be a loss and if it's a debit balance then it is a loss because loss has a debit nature and if it's a credit balance then it's a gain and gain is an income okay so if it's written disposal account debit this means it is a loss on disposal because loss is always debit loss and expense as debit nature and if instead if it's written that it is a credit balance that it must be a gain on disposal then we have a bank loan now as you can see the year ends on 28 february 17 for big and we have to repay the loan on when on december 17 my dear students if we have to repay the loan till 28 february 2018 in this question then the, all of the loans that needs to be repaid the next year are known as current liability okay so in this question loan is a current liability and if the loan needs to be repaid after february 2018 okay so then loan is a non current liability and if the examiner doesn't mentions the date then loan is always a non current liability unless it is written as a short term loan then it's a current liability then we have inventory uh, we uh, studied in the last class as well so any inventory uh, on first is an opening obviously and any inventory that is written in the list of balances is an opening inventory and any inventory that is given in the additional information at it is closing inventory now as you can see uh, addition information belongs to which date 28 february that is end of the year now we have a bank balance uh, if the bank balance is written as a debit this means it is a positive bank balance and if instead it is a credit balance then it must be in bank overdraft that is a current liability for the business we have trade receivables that is customers our uh, credit customers and trade payables are credit suppliers provision for doubtful debt will be discussing later capital uh, that is given in the examination it is always an opening capital because the closing capital is never given it always needs to be calculated then we have a drawing as you can see additional information bunch of information is given in node 1 inventory is given uh, it is a closing inventory in node 2 staff salary include 8000 paid to big now as you can see big is the owner uh, he is the owner of the business she is the owner of the business so we cannot pay salary to the owner okay if owner has withdrawn salary uh, that is for own use uh, then it must be termed as a drawing so what we need to do we need to uh, deduct this amount from the salary account and we need to add it up in a drawing account so the entry would be double entry would be salary would be credited and drawing would be debited 
Then we have a rent receivable and it is owing. Owing means accrued. So we add accrued at the end of the year. We studied in the previous question as well. Accrued at the end of the year is added and prepaid is subtracted. Then we have general expense. It is also owing. Owing again is accrued. Accrued needs to be added. No interest have been paid on the loan. So no matter uh, whether the interest have been paid or not, interest expense must be charged in the income statement. And these all adjustments accrued or prepaid adjustments uh, relate to which accounting concept? It relates to the matching concept. During the year, new shop fixtures costing 8,000 were purchased. Payment were made by check, but no entries have been made. So what we need to do, we need to record this transaction. The entry would be shop fixtures account would be debited and bank account would be credited. Uh, then uh, in note 7, the uh, rates of depreciations are given. Depreciation is charged on all non currency owned at the end of the year. Owned at the end of the year, this means it is a full year policy. Okay, so normally in final accounts questions, examiner does not uh, confuse uh, with the month wise policy uh, as it is a bit tricky. So normally in a uh, final accounts question, normally it is tested full year policy. Buildings are held on a 20 years of lease. We have taken the building for 20 year lease and we need to charge depreciation on 20 years and we'll be seeing it in later part of the lesson. And then we have shop fixtures, 15% straight line and computer equipment rate of depreciation is 20% reducing balance. We have already learned how to calculate depreciation uh, when we were doing that topic. Then we have trade receivables, 2500 were considered irrecoverable. Irrecoverable means bad debt and bad debt is basically an expense and should be written off and provision for doubtful debt is 5%. So we need to charge uh, it as an expense or an income depending whether the doubt is increased during the year or decreased during the year. Now we are going to solve the income statement part in this lesson. So we need to prepare an income statement. So income statement is normally prepared in two columns. So let me make the format for you guys. First of all, we need to put the heading. So normally heading is already there in an examination question. And if it's not there, you may put the heading. Uh, we would start with the name of the owner of the business, then income statement for the year ended and the year ended. Now, these two columns are not debit and credit. These co two columns are just for illustration purpose. Okay, anything that needs to be plus and minus would be entered in the first column and uh, any final balances would be entered in the second column. So first of all, better we have sales. Then from sales figure, we need to deduct a return inward, also known as sales return. Or sometimes examiner also refers to as uh, goods returned by customers. This is also return inward. Then we need to leave one line. And then it's a cost of sale. Cost of sale means the goods that we have sold for this amount. How much it actually costs the business to source these goods. Okay, it's a cost of sale. So we'll be starting with opening inventory. That is inventory at start of the year. Then we need to add purchases because uh, when we purchase goods, uh, our inventory would go up in our outlet. Then we need to deduct return outward, also known as purchase return. Now, as you can see, return inward is being deducted from sales, also known as sales return, and return outward being deducted from purchase, also known as purchase return. Then we need to add carriage inwards. Carriage is basically transportation cost. So we studied earlier, there are two types of carriage. One is carriage inward, and another one is carriage outward. So inward uh, belongs to the purchasing of goods whenever we are buying the goods the transportation cost that we need to bear is carriage inward and it need to be added to cost of sale and carriage outward relates to the delivery of goods to customers and that carriage outward part will go to expense then we have less closing inventory we need to write closing inventory why are we deducting closing inventory because this inventory haven't been sold yet and it will be sold uh, next year so therefore, we need to deduct the closing inventory. So therefore, it shouldn't be charged this year. Instead, it will be charged in the next accounting period. Then we have a cost of sales. So normally, cost of sale is written two times. Uh, once when we are uh, writing as a heading and secondly, in front of the final value. If we need a net sales and cost of sale, we are left with the figure of gross profit. And why it is called a gross profit? Because it is not the final profit. Uh, there needs to be made two adjustments in it. One is add other income. In other income, normally we write anything that is received, rent receive or rent receivable, commission receive or commission receivable means the same thing. Discount receive. 
So any income that is generated other than uh, while buying and selling of goods is known as other income. So there can be gain on disposal. It, is, it would be also written uh, under the heading of other income. There can be decrease in provision for doubtful debts or there can be debts recovered, bad debt recovered. So these are all other incomes. Then we need to leave three lines for other incomes and then when we can move on to the expenses part and final answer will be profit or loss. Now let us start this and let us uh, put in the values. First of all, my dear students, we have what we have uh, sales. Now as you can see, sales is also termed as revenue. So we'll be starting with revenue and that is 410,000. Do we have a return inward? Yes. I can find return inward also known as sales return. So if we deduct return inwards on the sale figure, I have left with this value and this is uh, known as uh, net sales, but the examiner normally does not label this. So I am also not labeling this value. The, uh, actually, for your knowledge, this is known as net sales. Then we have a, a opening inventory. Opening inventory is always given in the list of balance on the trial balance or the trial balance. And closing inventory is always written under additional information. So in, though we have an opening inventory, then we have purchases. As you can see, we have purchases 216800. We need to write purchases. Then we have a return outward, also known as purchase return. Because we have returned these goods to our suppliers, therefore we do not need to chart this year. Okay, then we have a carriage. Uh, do we have carriage in this question? There is no carriage. So I'll be putting a dash in front of carriage inverse. So if we haven't pay, uh, made the format earlier, we can just skip this line altogether and we can write closing inventory just after the return outward. Then we have a closing inventory. Closing inventory is always mentioned in notes and opening inventory is always mentioned in this list of balance. As you can see, we have a closing inventory. Opening, add, purchase, less return, less closing. This becomes cost of sales. And if we deduct the net sales and cost of sale figure, we are left with gross profit. Now, in other income, we have anything that is received, rent received or rent receivable, commission received or commission receivable, discount received. So let us see, do we have any received other than trade receivable? Trade receivable is not part of other income. It is a current asset. Anything other than trade receivable, the be it a rent receivable or commission receivable, we have a rent receivable. Rent receivable or rent receive means the same thing. As you can see, we have received rent 15,000. And we also need to uh, see, are there any adjustment relating to rent receivable? Yes, we have find, uh, found one adjustment and that is the rent receivable was owing. Now, as you can see, we have already received the rent worth 15,000. And rent received uh, worth 3,000 is still owing. So there's a mnemonic that we need to remember for accrued and prepaid. Accrued plus at the end of the year and prepaid needs to be minus at the end of the year. APPM. Okay. Accrued plus prepaid minus APPM. So if it is an accrued at the end of the year needs to be added. Now what's the logic in that? Logic is we have already received rent worth 15,000 and the tenant still owes us 3,000 in terms of rent. So therefore we have earned 18,000 worth of rent this year. Okay, and out of that, 15,000 has already been received and 3,000 hasn't been received yet. But uh, the tenant still owes the rent uh, that uh, he has consumed this year. Okay, so this accrued income is basically a current asset for the business. And this 3,000 also needs to be written in a current asset in a statement of financial position that is a balance sheet. Now we can also calculate provision for doubtful debt. You have already learned that if the provision is increased during the year, then it is an expense for the business. And if instead the provision is decreased during the year, then it is an income for the business. Okay. So we need to calculate provision for doubtful debt. First of all, we need to start with trade receivables. Now, as you can see how much trade receivable we do have. Trade receivable is 34,500. Okay. So we'll be starting with this. We are doing rough working. Whether the doubt has increased during the year or decreased during the year. Now, a doubt means uh, either the customer will pay or will not pay. Now, there are some customers that have already done bad trade receivables, 2500 were considered irrecoverable and should be written off. So, this means we are just considering them and we haven't written off them yet. But what we need to do, we need to write off this amount 
So out of this 34,500, I need to deduct the bad debt amount 2,500. Now I am left with total trade receivables of 32,000. Now, uh, will these 100% of these customers will pay us? No. There are 5% doubtful customers. So 5% of them are doubtful. So what we need to do after deducting the irrecoverable debt, uh, I need to apply 5% on the remaining trade receivables and 5% of 32,000 becomes 1,600. Now, at the end of the year, we have doubt of 1,600 and this needs to be compared with the opening uh, receivables. Uh, sorry, opening doubtful debt. Now, as you can see in the list of balances, we had a doubt previous year that is 1,100. And this debt was, doubt was 1,100 and this doubt has now increased to 1,600. Now, as you can see, the doubt has been increased from 1,100 to 1,600. It has been increased by 500. And if the doubt is increasing, it is not a good news. Instead, it is a bad news for the business. So then it is an expense and not another income. So if instead the doubt would have been decreased this year, that it must have been stated under other income. Okay, difference between opening and closing. Now, as you can see, there is only one other income. So I need to add up and I can just write directly also in the second column. So what we need to do, we need to add up other income and gross profit. And this value is basically a no name figure. It doesn't have any name. So uh, we can uh, skip this as well. But uh, it's better to uh, write this 201800 no name figure because examiners sometimes give one mark for this value as well. Then we need to write expenses. My dear students, as you may be aware that irrecoverable debt, bad debt is an expense and it must always charge as an expense in the income statement. Then we have an increase in provision we have already calculated. Uh, what is the difference between irrecoverable debt and provision for doubtful debt? Irrecoverable uh, debts are debts that already been turned bad and doubtful debts are bad debts that will happen in the future. So we are estimating bad debts of the future year and we are recording them immediately. So it is uh, recorded under the concept of prudence. So prudence says uh, we must uh, uh, anticipate the loss and we should record it immediately. Then we have some other expenses such as administration expense as you can see in the question. Uh, it's better to highlight the, the way I'm doing it with the highlighter so we can clearly see that which adjustments are still left. Okay, we are, we are paid administration 71,000 and we also need to make sure are there any adjustments in this or not. If there are any adjustments and you are not accounting for it, then you will be definitely losing marks. Then we have an insurance. As you can see, there is no adjustment in the insurance part as well. So insurance is an expense and we have paid 6,800 worth of insurance. Then we have electricity. Electricity also doesn't have any adjustment, but staff salary do have an adjustment. So let us see what is the adjustment part in the staff salary. Now, as you can see, the staff salary that is given in the examination is 59,700 and it should be charged as an expense. But in note 2, it mentioned that staff salary includes 8,000 paid to BIC. Now, as you can see, BIC is a sole trader, BIC, BIC is a business owner. And if we are paying money to owner, so it is a drawing and not the salary. So what we need to do, we need to deduct this from the salary part and add it to the drawing part. Okay, so the amount of salary that is given in the trial balance need to be deducted by 8,000 in order to calculate the actual amount of salary, in order to calculate actual amount of salary. Therefore, we have deducted this amount. So 59,700 minus 8,000 would become 51,700. Yes, that's correct. Then we have advertising expense. And let us see what about advertising. Again, there is no adjustment in advertising as well. So advertising has been paid 27,500 and it is also an expense. Now, are there any other expenses? Yes, we have a general expense. As you can see, we have paid general expense worth 14,600. Is there any adjustment in general expense? Yes, general expense is basically owing. Owing means accrued. Now, as you can see, the mnemonic accrued plus and prepaid minus. Now, what happens at the end of the year? We need to add up the accrued expense. This means we have already paid general expenses worth 14,600 and this 5,000 we have already spent this but we haven't paid this amount yet. So even if we have not paid this 5,000 still be charged as an expense and the amount that has not yet been paid would be recorded as a current liability in the statement of financial position that is balance sheet. 
Then we need to chart depreciation. Now, as you can see, in note number seven, building depreciation uh, lease, building is on lease, and lease runs for 20 years, and appropriate amount is charged on the lease. Now, what does appropriate amount means? Now, my dear student, just remember one thing. Whenever a non-current asset has stated life given. So, this means it's a straight line method. And in a straight line method, if we have life of the asset, what we need to do? We need to divide the life with the original cost. Now, as you can see, the original cost is 20,000. And in 20, uh, we have paid 90,000. And we can use this asset for how many years? For 20 years. So what we need to do, we need to uh, divide the original cost with the life. Okay, 90,000 divided by 20 years, then the depreciation each year is 4,500. Okay, so if the rate or percentage is given in a straight line, that needs to be multiplied. And if instead uh, percentage is given, it is multiplied. And if the life is given, we need to divide it with the life. And if instead 5% percentage was given, then we can just multiply 90,000, multiply by 5%, this would be the same. Then we have some other assets that need to be depreciated, and that is shop fixtures. Now, as you can see, shop fixtures, the rate is 15% straight line. Again, in a straight line method, we need to apply percentage, just multiply by 15%. Now, there is another adjustment that must not be missed, uh, and that is note number six. We have bought new fixtures costing 8,000, uh, but we haven't recorded this yet in our books. So again, this needs to be recorded first uh, before calculating depreciation. Okay, so what we need to do, uh, the original value for fixtures, as we can see, is 24,000. And we need to add up this 8,024 plus 8 would become 32,000. And we need to apply 15% on the 32,000. 24 plus 8, and we need to apply 32,000 times 15%, and the depreciation is 4,800. And lastly, we have a computer depreciation, uh, but there is a difference between the computer cal calculation and other calculation. Why? Because in computer, we are supposed to charge the reducing balance method. Now, in a reducing balance method, as we have already studied earlier, we need not need to charge the percentage on the original cost. Instead, we need to first deduct the provision for depreciation. Now, as you can see, the computers that we do have, uh, originally cost us $60,000, but out of this $60,000, $42,000 has already been depreciated. How uh, come we know that? Because there is a provision for depreciation already given. So what we need to do, we need to deduct the $42,000 provision from the original cost, and then we are left with what net book value, and what we need to do, we need to apply percentage on the book value. Now, this is important difference between a straight line method and a reducing balance method. In a straight line method, we just apply percentage on the original cost. But in a reducing balance method, what we need to do, we need to first deduct the provision for depreciation, and then we need to apply the percentage. Then we have another thing that is loss on disposal. It is normally there, not uh, very often tested. As you can see, a disposal account is given, and it's uh, written debit. So if it's a debit, then it must be a loss, and if it's a credit, then it must be a gain. Because gain has a credit nature, profit or gain or income, and loss or expense has a debit nature. Then we have a loan interest. As you can see, loan is a liability, but the interest that needs to be paid is a expense as well, and the liability if it, if it has not yet been paid. So what we need to do, we need to apply 60,000 times 8%, and in the uh, adjustment, it is given no interest have been paid. So we just need to apply 60,000 times 8%. Six eights are 48, so the interest would be 4,800. So sometimes the examiner says, let's suppose 3,000 has already been paid. So in this list, it's given uh, loan interest or loan interest paid 3,000. This means out of this total 4,800, 3,000 has already been paid. So this means 1,800 is accrued. So what we need to do, we need to write here like this way. So 3,000 paid plus uh, 1,800 accrued, and we need to add up both, and the total figure would then uh, again be 4,800. So we just need to show the workings here. Uh, we need to write paid first, and we need to add accrued value, and this, the total expense would be charged in the income statement. So all of the expenses, uh, we have already done calculating all the expenses. What we need to do, we need to add up all of these expenses. Now the total of expenses is 215,300. 
Now, first of all, it was a sales. Then we deducted a cost of sales in order to get this gross profit. Then we added other income. This is a no-name figure. And from this no-name figure, we need to deduct this expenses. Now, as you can see, gross profit plus other income is lower than the expenses. Expenses are more than gross profit plus other income. Now, as you can see, the final answer is not positive. Instead, it is a negative. And again, it's very rare that we get a loss figure in the examination. That is loss for the year. And if it's positive value, then it must be written as a profit for the year. And if it's a negative value, then it must be written as a loss for the year. So I hope, my dear students, you are able to understand the concepts of income statement.